So arc sine. Let's talk about arc sine. So for notation, arc sine is equal to sine, and this negative one up top. So this stands for the inverse sine. And what we're looking at is what's the domain and the range of this guy. So what we're going to do is we define, we restrict the domain of the original sine function. So sine has a restricted domain. Typically, typically sine is not going to be restricted. You can plug in any number you want. So it inputs a, an angle. Um, and then it outputs a value. However, in order for arc sine or the inverse sine to actually be a function, we need to make sure that we take sine over the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So here's what that's going to do. We restrict sine over this interval. Its output, it's, so this is its domain, its range is going to be the um, the values between negative one and one, including them. So if I draw a picture of what's going on here, here's the unit circle. Here's negative pi over two. Here's pi over two, and we are restricting ourselves to this area right here. Okay, so these are our values that we can look at. So the sine measures height. So down here is negative one and it'll take on all values up here to positive one. That's why the range is here. So the domain is we're gonna say the following. We're gonna say the sine of some angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 will be equal to some value over here. I don't know what it is. Let's call it y between negative 1 and positive 1. So now when we reverse the process, the arc sign, okay, or the inverse sign, is going to input a number between negative 1 and 1. So its domain, it'll take all numbers between negative 1 and 1, it'll input them, and it will output, or its range, will be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So when we make our little domain range table that you guys have there in that grid. Here's sine. Oops, here's arc sine. Here's domain, here's range. Let's block this off here. So the domain of the regular sine function is restricted to negative pi over 2, pi over 2, and its output is from negative 1 to 1. Because an inverse function and a regular function switch x and y, they do the opposite. We're switching our domain and our range. So our range now. means that whatever number you input into the arc sine, it'll give you a value between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 out. And the numbers that we can put in are from negative 1 to 1.